Let's find some confidence intervals using the TI-84. We want to find two things. The first one is a 95% confidence interval. That's going to be our interval that contains the actual, what is this, average grade point average for our population. And the second one is the margin of error. To accomplish number one, we want to go to our calculator stat menu. So we'll go stats over here to tests and we're looking for those interval options. And as I scroll down here, I notice that seven is a Z interval and eight is a T interval. So I need to decide which of these two we need. Let's go back to that question. As I look at this question more carefully, I see that N is equal to 900. This is a really large sample size. And as I'm deciding between using the T interval or the Z interval, I know that my T distribution is approximating the normal distribution. And in order to use that normal distribution, I either need a sample size or degrees of freedom greater than 30 or the population standard deviation. 900 is really big, so I've got that going for me. N is 900. We also have a sample mean here of 2.7, and we're given the population standard deviation. Having that population standard deviation means that we can use our Z interval. So back to our calculator, let's choose number seven, and I'm there, so I'm gonna hit enter. And I don't wanna enter data here, I already have these stats computed. So I'm gonna arrow over to stats to make sure that stats is highlighted. And it's gonna to start to prompt me for all of those things. I've got a population standard deviation of 0.4, I'm just gonna type right over what I had there a sample mean GPA of 2.7, and a sample size here of 900. That confidence level is 95%, so I'll go ahead and calculate that one. And I get this interval, I'm 95% confident that the actual average GPA for freshmen is gonna be between this 2.6739 and 2.7261. To find that margin of error, I wanna find the length of this interval. So I'm gonna take that upper number, 2.7261, and subtract the lower number, 2.6739, equals, and then I will divide that by two. So divided by two gives me a margin of error of 0 0.0261, which gives us a second way of describing our interval. We could say that that confidence interval is our sample mean, which was 2.7, plus or minus our error of 0 0.0261. But we're not just gonna need to do Z intervals, you're gonna need to do T intervals as well. In this next one, we wanna compute a 99% confidence interval as well as that margin of error. I know I need to identify all the things, so let's go ahead and start there. I've got 25 students, this is our N. Continuing to read in that survey of participants, we had an average GPA of 2.9, that's X bar, our sample mean, and we had a standard deviation, a standard deviation of those surveyed of 0.5, which means that our sample standard deviation is 0.5. So not only do we have a small sample size, less than 30, but we also have a sample standard deviation. We definitely want the T interval for this one. Let's plug those numbers in. Back to our stat menu, over to tests, down to that T interval and then enter. I am on stats. Let's go ahead and put in the information for this example. This time we had a sample mean of 2.9 with a sample standard deviation of 0.5 and a survey size of 25, and we wanted the 99% confidence level. As I arrow down and hit enter to calculate, I see that I'm 99% confident that the actual average GPA for those students is between 2.6203 3 and 3.1797. I can also find that margin of error. We'll take the upper number 3.1797 and subtract the lower number um, 2.6203, hit enter for equals and then divide by two. And we've got a margin of error of plus or minus 0.2797. But what if this was a confidence interval for proportions instead? I've got you covered.